Here we are in uh, Masca and uh, we're looking at the old Shield Massif in uh, northwest Tenerife. And Masca is characterized by a series of very magnesium rich lava flows and it's been exposed to a number of giant landslides. Over here we see the uh, debris avalanche deposit of one of these giant landslides and there's a little car coming by so let's wait for a second. Here we continue now, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Here you see the random accumulation of larger blocks that are concentrated in this debris avalanche deposit. And uh, here I'll zoom in a little more. We get a good sense for how these uh, giant landslide debris avalanche deposits might actually look like. In many cases they're not preserved, but here in this old shield massif that is about uh, five to six million years old, we have one preserved. And it's a semi-random collection of rocks here. It's a very kind of crystal rich lump that's uh, in the debris avalanche. Here we have some large slivers of what looks to be formerly pyroclastic material. And above we are back in a uh, less coarse unit. And there we are in a mixed unit that has uh, larger as well as smaller fragments. Here's one of the larger fragments for instance. And uh, this is quite a massive deposit. So it's quite thick actually. It goes up to at least there. And there's a few dikes that are intruded but some of these dikes are sheared off and uh, that means that uh, they are kind of rootless. They are disconnected and uh, then we would call them ghost dikes but of course there's also a few dikes that are a little younger and uh, therefore they go through the entire mass so here we have some very crystal rich units let's see whether i get the angle right and uh, up there we have a very coarse unit again with large blocks potentially up to meter or several meter size and uh, this is how a debris avalanche deposit would look like with a very mixed class population, mixed origin of these and uh, here we have again a very coarse one you can just about see the uh, uh, larger crystals in there and uh, then we're moving up stratigraphy. There's some oxidized reddish horizons here, some darker horizons. And ultimately, eventually, there is uh, lavas coming in here, overlying this debris avalanche deposits. So these would be lavas that are cascading into this uh, depression, this former depression, filling up the depression with uh, new kind of uh, lava fill material, as we've seen, for example, in the Oritava Valley in the upper part, where lavas are starting to fill the uh, depression of the Oritava giant landslide, which occurred 560,000 years ago. So, so here, these uh, infill lavas, they're often very crystal rich and I tried to kind of give you a sense here. So here we are again in these rather pyroxene and olivine rich rocks, the uh, uh, beige colored material that is actually the olivines and uh, they're a bit altered here, they're not perfectly fresh and uh, here we have the large pyroxenes. So here's a large olivine that is altered and here's a large pyroxene and there's quite a lot of it to be honest. So this is then continuing and it's going up into um, uh, columnar jointed and camerites and eventually also there's some pickrites implying that the underplating zone was uh, likely um, brought up or part of the underplating zone and uh, increasingly more mafic compositions initially after the landslide were produced. So I close here and say thank you for your attention. All the very best. Bye bye.